If you wanna know what it takes to sleep outdoors in extreme cold, I consider anything minus 40 or below to be extreme cold. And just being outdoors at those temperatures can be extremely dangerous. Never mind trying to sleep outdoors and survive. But by slowly sleeping at colder and colder temperatures and dialing in this sleep system, I've managed to sleep at minus 50 degrees Celsius and not only been warm, but been comfortable enough to sleep through the night. With our sleep system, there are three major dangers that we need to address in order to survive at those extreme cold temperatures, wind, cold, and moisture. Wind will suck the heat out of even the warmest sleep system. My method of choice for blocking the wind is to have a solid tent and choose your campsites carefully. Basically avoid what I did right here by setting up next to a big open area that the wind can come through and then having your tent set up high off the ground so wind can just funnel right underneath it and cool you off. A protected campsite and a tent without drafts will go a long way in helping you keep warm during extreme cold temperatures. If you're like me and like to use a floorless tent in the winter time, then make sure you're piling snow around the edges of the tent in order to seal out the wind. My sleep system is designed to provide the maximum amount of warmth by creating a large temperature gradient between my hot body inside of it and then the cold ground and air. On the ground I use a three-part ground insulation system starting with this reflective mat. The reflective mat doesn't provide a ton of insulation. The one I have here has a little bit of foam in it so it's probably boosting my R value about, by about 0.5 but the main reason I like to bring this reflective mat is because like I said I like to use tents in the winter time that don't have a floor and the mat helps protect my entire sleep system and bring it off the ground a little bit. A lot of people think that the reflective layer is going to boost the warmth of their sleep system, but that's only the case if the re reflective layer isn't in contact with something solid. The way the reflective layer provides warmth is that it reflects heat back to you and prevents radiative heat loss, but if that reflective layer is in contact with something solid, then it's going to be conducting heat and not providing any sort of warmth boost by reflecting the heat back to you. On top of the reflective layer, I like to have a foam mat. The foam mat is going to help with conductive heat loss to the ground. It also provides a fail safe in case your sleeping pad starts losing air in the middle of the night. With the foam mat, you're increasing the R value of your ground insulation by two. And I like to use the folding accordion style foam mats instead of the ones that you roll up because I find the ones that roll up are really hard to unroll when it's really cold out. To head off a couple questions that I know I'm gonna get in the comment section, yes, if you put the foam mat on top of your sleeping pad, it's gonna provide a little bit more warmth than having it underneath, but I find having it underneath is a lot more comfortable. The second thing is that no, the gray part Part of this mat does not face up. The way that Nemo has built the reflective insulation into this pad makes it so that it reflects up towards the orange part. So they state on their website that the orange part of the sleeping pad is supposed to be facing up. The bulk of the ground insulation comes from the Thermrest X-Therm sleeping pad. This is by far the warmest sleeping pad that I've ever used. When you're laying on it, you can actually feel the heat being reflected back to you due to the reflective film that is used inside of it. This is the X-Therm NXT, which Thermrest is releasing in 2023. It's a little bit thicker at three inches thick, a little bit warmer with an R value of 7.3 instead of 6.9, which the old version had. And it's a little bit lighter as well. Around my body in order to protect me from cold air and moisture, it really starts with my base layer and then extends out. I use a thin and tight long sleeve and long pant base layer, not for insulation, but as the first step for managing moisture. The the purpose of a base layer is to wick sweat away from your body and something thin and tight is going to do that most efficiently. The Merino toque and socks that I also wear as part of my base layer system have the same purpose. I then wear insulated socks, fleece pants, and a fleece sweater for on body insulation. Getting out of your tent to pee without fully bundling up would be very dangerous during extreme cold temperatures. So having fewer layers is ideal to make it easier to use a pee bottle. Don't get it twisted, you need a pee bottle if you're gonna be out camping in temperatures below minus 30. You do not wanna be getting out of your sleep system and out of your tent at those temperatures. The big kahuna of the sleep system is this sleeping bag from Thermarest, the Polar Ranger. This thing is comfort rated to minus 20 degrees Celsius, limit rated to minus 30, and I've taken this sleeping bag down to those temperatures and been very comfortable. It's quite lightweight for how warm it is, weighing only 1.48 kilograms, and has tons of awesome features, including this snorkel at the head end here, which really helps with managing moisture and keeping your face warm, as well as these armholes, which can act as vents if you're using this in a little bit warmer conditions. As well, you can stick your arms out and hold up a book or do some chores around your tent without having to fully get out of your sleeping bag. 
Thermarest released an updated version of the Polar Ranger for 2022. Some minor updates and tweaks to some of the features, but the big change is that it's now made with 100% recycled nylon. So you get basically the same awesome sleeping bag as the previous version, but it's now a little bit more sustainable. The next major piece of insulation is this top quilt that goes over top of the Polar Ranger. It's gonna provide a lot of extra warmth, but more importantly, it's gonna help with moisture management. No matter what, our bodies are gonna be producing a lot of moisture while we're sleeping, and we need a way to manage it. Otherwise, moisture is gonna start accumulating within our sleep system, and it's gonna start decreasing the warmth that it's providing, and that's gonna get really dangerous really quick. The first step to managing moisture involves the base layers, which we already talked about. The base layers collect moisture from our skin and then allows it to start its journey away from our body and through the sleep system as moisture vapor. All the layers we've talked about today are highly breathable so that the moisture vapor can move through the system to the outer layers. But as the vapor moves through the sleep system towards the outside of the warmth gradient that we've created with our sleep system, it's going to eventually get cold enough that it's going to condense into liquid. But what we don't want is for that to happen within the down of our sleeping bag because when down is exposed to liquid, it loses its loft and warmth. This is where a synthetic top quilt comes into play. The synthetic material is going to provide a safe place for that moisture vapor to condense. Since synthetic material does not lose its loft and maintains its warmth when it's exposed to moisture. I like this Revelation Apex quilt from Enlightened Equipment. It's made with Apex insulation, which is relatively light and less bulky compared to some other synthetic insulations out there. It also comes with pad straps, so there's little clips on the quilt and then attaches to these pad straps that you put around your sleeping pad and that helps lock out drafts and lock in warmth. Normally I just wear a merino toque and merino buff on my head, but if it's really cold out, I'll add on this synthetic hood from Enlightened Equipment. This is guaranteed to keep my head nice and toasty during extreme cold temperatures. Go check out this video for my hot tenting gear list. I like to bring a hot tent during extreme cold temperatures. I don't keep it running over the course of the night, so I still need a super warm sleep system, but I like having it in the evening so I can hang out and not have to get into my sleep system right away. I can stay warm while reading a book or watching a movie.